Hi, it's Feet of Patcher. Another week. We are building a, a, a sailboat and uh, videoing the process. It's a beautiful sunny day. Very nice. It is, however, jolly nippy. <laughs> it's not very warm at all. Um, the bird bath over there still got ice on it. Have a look. Frozen solid. A little bit of liquid I can see moving under there, but God, it's cold. But let's let's go inside and have a look. This week has all been about sanding and painting. Um, and yeah, I've done quite a lot of it. A major sand up in all of this area, the heads, the galley area, whatever this area in the middle area is, the four, uh, no, the, four the, the quarter berth completely sanded up. So all of the panels and all of this in a bare wood. Then, the next thing I did was on all of the galley cupboards and the cupboards or furniture and the heads, put a coat of, no, or two coats of thin epoxy on that. And then I've been in there painting. One coat of undercoat so far in this area. In the heads, if you look in the eyes, you'll see, well it's not finished by any means, but the, the, the walls, the panels there, have all got two coats on. The quarter burst got two coats on, undercoat. And obviously the next job there will be to get the gloss on. Um, but to push on with the painting. Goal is to get all of the heads area painted out, to get in the galley, get that painted out, get that quarter berth glossed. Um, you might imagine, let me crawl up in there. The painting up in here is quite a joy. You sort of end up laying up in here and swinging the paintbrush like this, which is Can't quite really a, see, but... No, you can probably get the impression of 
my feet with the mask on, obviously, to, to protect yourself from fumes. It's, it's quite an experience. But anyhow, only needs a that only needs a coat of gloss, and that will be finished. And that's what we've been doing. The one final piece of this cabinet tree that needed making was, was this bottom piece. It's painted in white now, and these two side pieces here. Curious shape piece, obviously. These two pieces are cut at 45 degrees to, to join into the furniture there, but they're in position. Um, so that's the cabinetry in here done. So as soon as it's painted up, we can actually get some connections, get the sink in, get the, the water spout in, get it all connected up. That would be nice. So, I wants to come in on that line there. Starting to get a bit of paint on in there. Yesterday, Kerry and I went to the to the hardware store and we ordered the tiles. So I'm going to tile under the stove, up this side, and this bulkhead along to here somewhere. This will all be tile. All that bulkhead was in there and there. And we ordered the tiles. Quite a small tile with a with a pattern on it. Looked quite nice, I think. Um, so. They didn't have them in stock. Uh, it said normally it's uh, three days, I think, delivery time, but obviously these are not normal times, so they couldn't say when they'll be delivered. But hopefully, in the next week or so, I'll get the call, say they're there, go and pick them up, and then I can start tiling that. And, um, I need to do a bit of reading, but I imagine at the moment setting the tiles in, in thickened epoxy, you can tile into wood. Um, they did have some adhesive in a tube 
the claim to stick to all surfaces that's in the hardware store. Possibility. I should do a bit of reading in the next day or two about sticking tiles on wood, two wood, in boats. See what's recommended. I can imagine thinking the epoxy will work fine, but, but we'll see. I might get final decision very soon before we start the tiling. Good. So we sat in the boat with, with Hazel. Um, you've been, well, first of all, you did some traveling, didn't you? You were, you were underway. Yes. What, where did you go? In Tenerife. In Tenerife. Or on. <laughs> in, in or on Tenerife, yeah. okay. And that wasn't wasn't a big deal. It was a little bit no. before this coronavirus thing really kicked yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, before all the, the borders were closed and the flights got cancelled. Mm -hmm. Came yeah. home just before that. Yeah. And weather? Good, sunny, warm. Yeah, uh, nice, nice, yeah. nice, yeah, and a bit of sea views, I guess. Yes, eh? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you've been working on something, or we've been working on something, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell, the, tell us about that? Yes, uh, I have released an EP. Of music. Of music, uh -huh. yes. Songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> five. <laughs> yeah, okay, five songs, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so released, what does that mean? Well, it is out in the world now. You can you can find it on iTunes, on Spotify, on Amazon, anywhere really. All right, okay. And, and, and what artist name have you used? My own. <laughs> your, your very own yeah, name this Hazel time. Hazel Brown. Because <laughs> you have experimented with a few artist names. Yes, I have, you? but it doesn't I like, like my own name. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good name. So <laughs> Hazel Brown. It. Yeah. Jolly good. And, and the EP is called what? Fallen too far. Fallen too far. Yes. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Fallen too far by Hazel Brown. Yeah. It's out now. It is, yes. Good. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, you probably remember that I was messing around attempting to charge the batteries for these Bosch cordless tools. It's a 12 volt battery, attempting to charge those from the, uh, from the ship's power, from the boat power, which is 12 volt. Um, and what had happened was that Bosch brought out this new charger, uh, which is a very simple device. It has a nominal 12 volt transformer on this end, and a socket unit there that the battery plugs into to charge it. It's, all it's got on it is a one LED which flashes when it's charging and glows permanently when it's fully charged. So that's where we were last week, and I wanted to, instead of using the transformer, I wanted to um, charge this from the boat power. So I, I cut the transformer off like that. I put a, the other one's in the boat. I put a cigarette lighter socket on the end of that cable. I plugged it into the boat. We put the battery in there, and the net result was that it charged, but it never reached 100% state of charge, which means that the LED never stopped flashing. That's where we were. So, further experiments. The first thing I wanted to do was to measure the voltage output from this transformer, see what it's giving out. Um, and I've got my voltmeter out and do a few measurements, to see what's going on. Um, so, basically, I've got the, the transformer here that I cut off. I should plug that in, and the first thing to do is measure what the Output voltage is from is what the output voltage is from that. So let's do that. I'm getting 14.86 volts out of that. 14.85, it's saying now. That's rather more than the 12 volt nominal, isn't it? Then. On the bottom of this charging unit, there are two screws. I took the screws out, opened it up. Inside there's a circuit board, um, and on that circuit board you've got these four contacts, two of which sense battery voltage, and two supply the charging current to the battery. And what became obvious was that the circuit board that's in the bottom of this unit is the control circuit. There's nothing in that thing apart from a transformer and obviously an inverter or something, and a rectifier of some sort, giving out 12 volt DC or nominal. 
Um, all the control circuitry is in the bottom of this. So what I've got here is another one of these Bosch chargers that I haven't cut the transformer off. Um, and I've taken it apart because the screws are removable. And what we see then, it's switched off, it is. What we see then is a, you know, relatively small circuit board and the contacts that the battery makes contact with. So I so say these two, I suspect, are sensing the battery voltage and these two are the, the charging ones. If I simply switch it on and try to get a readout from the charging ones, I don't get a, don't get a voltage readout at all, or very, very minimal. So I think we need the battery in position, sensing battery voltage, to get some idea of what's going in there. So let's just plug the battery in there like that. Lay that on its side so we can see what's going on. Good, switch it on. LED flashing. Let's take my glasses on. And see what we've got in the way of voltage in. 11.44. 11.45 volts is what we're getting out of there right now. 11.47, 11.48. So basically 11.5 volts there. And perhaps one more thought while we're here. Well, that's plugged in and charging. What kind of voltage have we got? This is where the transformer attaches to the circuit board. So we get the voltage coming out of the transformer here. And we've got just over 12 volts there, 12.14 it's reading right now. 12.14. I'm going to leave that now, wait until the LED stops flashing, which is fully charged, and come back, take a couple of measurements again. So it's just reached charged. Um, let's see what we've got, shall we? Voltage 12.77, that says. In here, what we've got coming out of the transformer, we've got 14.4, so back to the full voltage coming out of the transformer now. 14.4 there. So yeah, got a bit of wire in there. Ah, there we go. 12.73 volts is what we've got there now. 12.73, which is, you know, aligns with the idea that these are 12.6 volts in truth. So obviously, if I've got my cigarette lighter plug on the end of this and I've got enough voltage going in, I can charge these batteries. <coughs> now these batteries are, are fully charged at 12.6 volts. That's what became clear from my investigations. So all I've got to do is get more than 12.6 volts in there to fully charge that. Why couldn't I charge it last time? The answer is simply that my I have a temporary small battery on the boat, a little 40 amp hour battery that I'm using just to test the electrical circuitry. It's not plugged into a charger, it was fairly flat, it was only outputting 11.5 volts. So obviously I never get that battery fully charged with 11.5 volts from my board battery. I put the charger on and lo and behold, but have a look at this. There it is, the LED is not flashing. We're plugged into board 12 volt. The battery is completely charged. And let me wander you around here. You will notice that at the moment, it's a bit dark so you don't notice much at all, but at the moment I'm charging the onboard battery, the little temporary onboard battery I've got, plugged into the charger. So clearly we have reached the desired balance of voltages, which may well be the other way around to what I said last week. Um, but it's worked. Fully charged battery. I like that. So obviously, as long as we can get in 12.6 volts or more into this unit, we can charge these cordless tool batteries from board power. And if you think about it, when we're up and running with a proper ledger battery or service battery in place, solar panels in place, we should have 12.6 or more volts available, certainly when the sun's shining. Solar panels output 13 and a bit volts, 13 and a half volts or so.
which is the standard charging voltage for, for lead acid batteries at least. Um, so we should have plenty of voltage and it should work. I actually go as far as to say I'm confident it will work. The control circuitry in here will limit the voltage into here to the according amount and we will certainly, I'm sure, be able to charge Bosch cordless 12 volt batteries from board power. Well that's it for this week guys. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, all that youtube -y nonsense. And uh, see you next time. Riches in the sunset, stand at sea. Tell me where you're going so decisively. What's your destination? Tell me where you're bound. We can move together where adventures abound. Running free before the breeze. Are there many days such as Sunset and Charlie Waters bound, breaking through the tethers that kept you firm aground. Just go and you find out what awaits you there. Don't let worries bind you, don't mean that you don't care.